All right, FAQ number 30. What about 1 John chapter 5, verse 7? The controversial uh, Johannine comma, as it's called. Uh, a lot of people say that this was, you know, added by Erasmus and it was added and it shouldn't be in the Bible and all this other stuff. Kind of interesting because the clearest verse in the entire Bible on the Godhead, a lot of these modern uh, Christians... Uh, scholars and things, they call themselves scholars, they're just uh, Alexandrian perverts, and they come out and they say it shouldn't be in the Bible. So you take the clearest verse on the Godhead, the Trinity, you know, you take that out of the Bible. Kind of weird, and they're Orthodox Christians and people like me aren't. Sure. But what they'll say is they'll say there's no Greek manuscript support. And then you show them that there's Greek manuscript support, and they'll say yes, but there's no early. Uh, okay, there are no, you know, there's no early manuscripts. And you show them, well, uh, well, there are some early sightings here among church fathers and things. Well, yes, but they, they just keep backing off. It, so the whole thing is based on lies from the Alexandrian part. They'll tell you that there's no Greek manuscript support. I'm going to show you that that's not true. But let's just look at the verse here quick. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are, the, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay, now a lot of these new versions will skip verse 7 and they'll jump right down to verse 8. Okay, and I'm going to show you that there is support for this verse. First of all, let me show you this. We have here 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Those parts that are underlined, they'll say, oh, there's no manuscript support for that. Here you have Cyprian. And that's his quote there. This is a guy that was around, you know, early on, uh, the first couple centuries after the Bible was written. Um, and he quotes it. It is written of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. So he's referring to that right there. There's no other verse in Scripture that he would be referring to. All right. And there you, and this is... Uh, Early, oh, I got the back out here quite a bit. Early Church Fathers and the Authorized Version by Jack, by Dr. Jack Mormon. Um, the vast majority of early Church Father writings actually support the King James readings. Many of these controversial readings that are taken out. Uh, a lot of the Church, these early Church Fathers, they are quoting uh, those verses of Scripture that are removed. That these Alexandrian liars will tell you. There's no early support for it. You know, the King James is based on late manuscripts. They're lying to you, of course. I'll show you this one quick here before I zoom in. This is uh, a closer look, early manuscripts in the authorized version, again by Dr. Jack Mormon. Here we have 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And there you have... Uh, Basically, you have some of the different um, manuscripts and things there, old manuscripts and things, the old Latin, not the Latin Vulgate of Jer Jerome, but the old Latin Vulgate. It was around before Jerome's Latin Vulgate. And here there's, you know, these are the witnesses that are against it over here on the NIV side. So, but he says here, if the disputed words are removed in the Greek, the loose ends will not join up grammatically, which is very true. I mean, read the read the passage without 1 John 5, 7. It doesn't make sense. For a full defense of this most important Trinitarian passage, see KJVMT, uh, page 115. Not sure. It's probably one of his books there. I'm not sure about that. But, so there you have it from him. Now, another... Thing here to look at 1 John 5 7 why we retain 1 John 5 7 in the authorized version by Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. Now this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of scan down over this thing nice and slow. You can pause it and you can read this little booklet. It's not very big. It's just a couple pages, uh, eight pages long. Just a little booklet, printed booklet here, but you can read this thing uh, or you can get a copy of it for yourself from the Bible, uh, Bible Baptist bookstore I think it is in um, Florida down there, Pensacola, Florida. But I'll just show you some of this. Next page. Okay. 
over here on this page. Okay. I'll zoom in a little bit better and make it easier to understand here. And then here on the next one, Okay, here you have the actual different things, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, actually starting to cite some of the historical proofs for this passage. You can see again a lot of the, right in here, you know, there are the witnesses for it. Okay. Keep the verse, believe the verse, go by the book, let the godly men explain their infidelity at the judgment seat of Christ or their white throne judgment. And of course most of them will show up at the white throne judgment. There's the information there. If you want to get on that, uh, they have a website too, a web store there that you can go. You can write to this, you can call that number. Get this little booklet, very inexpensive. And it'll give you all the proof that you need that 1 John 5 Verse 7 belongs in the King James Bible.